Orange Bikes Stage 6. We're going to measure it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to bring it to you today on... Welcome back everybody and thanks for tuning in again. I know I've been putting posts about this bike up on the Instagram and the Facebook pages for quite a while and uh, this video is taking me a little longer than usual to get finished but sometimes that's life. Life doesn't always work with your schedule or do what you want it to do. For everyone that's checked in on me, I appreciate it a lot. Thank you very much. Now, having said that, let's move on. Let's talk about the bike. What we have is the 2020 Orange Stage 6 factory build option. Uh, 29 inch, 160 front, 150 rear, enduro race machine. Let's get a closer look, talk about some of these parts. Up front at the controls, we have Renthal bar and stem combo, tried and true, UK made. The hand grips, these are Orange's own strange branded hand grips. They work okay. Not the best for me. I usually like a little bit of a thicker grip, but uh, these have a nice feel to them. They have enough texture on the bottom that uh, they should work for a lot of other people. Maybe I have big hands. Maybe I just like uh, big squishy grips. Who knows? Braking duties on this bike are being taken care of the Shimano Dior XT four piston brakes. These have toolless reach adjust, bite point, and uh, they just have that Shimano feel that you know and love if you've tried them. They have, uh, I don't want to say bite point, it almost has like a tap whenever, you know, that you can feel in the lever whenever the brakes engage. And then they just have tons of power after that. Uh, not so much that if you just touch them, they're gonna lock up. They actually have a usable amount of power. I don't want to say they modulate because anytime I run any other brake that claims modulation, it usually means they have a soft, squishy feel and I hate them. On the front end here, we have the Fox 36 factory series. This is made for 29 inch front wheels, Kashima coat, 160 travel, high speed compression, low speed compression, high and low speed rebound, adjustable air spring that comes from the factory with one air token in it to make it play well with the rear suspension. Rear suspension is being taken care of by the Fox Float X2 factory series rear shock. Just like the fork, this has high and low speed compression, high and low speed rebound, adjustable air spring, and it comes from the factory with three volume spacers installed to give it a little more of a progressive spring feel so it works well with the kinematics of this frame. Also has a two position switch. This will help you climb when you need to, pretty much if you're racing, on stage, off stage. The wheels on this beast. We are running Stan's Flow rims on Hope Hubs, another UK brand. Max's Minions front and rear, can't go wrong there, pretty tried and true combo. All right, bringing it down the frame. We've got the Fox Transfer seat post with Kashima. Another strange branded seat. This is from Orange, it's one of their own in-house brands, made by SDG. Crank set and power transfer is being taken care of by the Hope Evo crank set running a 32 front, and we're running the Shimano Dior XT 12-speed drivetrain. Uh, with this combo, I've had plenty of range. Let's talk about the frame for a little bit. You know, the real meat and potatoes of why this bike is the way it is. All right, starting off with the specs. I don't want to get the numbers wrong, so I pulled out the laptop here. This is the medium frame, which happens to also be the smallest size they make. Now, using the word small on this bike is going to become a little bit of a joke as I go over these numbers. You'll see why. For the medium, this has a 17 inch seat post, pretty standard. 64 degree head angle, very common on today's enduro bikes. Seat angle is a nice steep 76 degrees, uh, makes pedaling, climbing very nice. The top tube, 621 millimeter. The reach number, if we draw a line from, imaginary line from the middle of the bottom bracket to the middle of the top of the head tube, we have 467 millimeters. The chainstay is 469 millimeters. 
No, you heard that right. 469 millimeter chainstay. That is the longest chainstay on a bike that I've ever ridden. But we'll get to that. A total wheelbase of 1,272 meters. Now, if that doesn't sound long to you, it is. Let's cut to a little demonstration to show you exactly how long the wheelbase of this bike is with it being the smallest version they make in this build. For the demonstration I've set up, pretty standard car, pretty standard bike rack, just uh, your standard on the roof Yakima bike rack. Let's see how it goes. Okay, as you can see, the rear axle is exactly in line with the back of the rack. This is the smallest size they make in this model. This is the medium. They make three more sizes bigger. Keep that in mind if you're using a rack like this and you're getting a bike like this, you might have to come up with some kind of semi-custom option or make sure it's a longer rack or go with one of the hitches where it just hangs. I'm not trying to dissuade you, just want you to be aware. So we were talking about the overall length of this bike, the uh, very, very long wheelbase. Um, with this bike and that wheelbase, I threw it on a scale and with tubes in the tires, my flat pedals on there, you know, this is a 29 inch wheeled 160 150 all aluminum bike there is no carbon fiber on here came in on the scale at 33 and a half pounds i was pretty impressed by this number because of the sheer size of the bike like i said with the no carbon all metal tubes everything almost working against it as far as bike parts go with the nice build in the air suspension this 33 pounds and eight ounces I don't know about you but I'm impressed with that um, I've had hard tails in the past that were heavier than this and uh, and you feel it on the trail when you're riding this bike does not feel as big as it is now one of the ways they got the weight on this bike the way it was is the way they do their frame it's not tubing traditional bikes made out of aluminum would be aluminum tubing they do some hydroforming they do some cutting. With their design, they use a semi-monocoque design, meaning the head tube, the bottom bracket, the dropouts, those are pretty much prefab machine pieces that they make. Every bit of tubing that you see starts out as a flat sheet of metal. Let's bring it in close. Let's have a little arts and crafts time. Right, what exactly do I mean by their frame pieces are made from a sheet of metal and not tubing? Well, let's take a look. Let's say this piece of paper was a piece of aluminum. Start out 6061 T6 aluminum. They take it, computer control, they figure out the designs they need and where they need to cut, and they begin to trim it. Now, through a series of stamps and presses, they'll begin to place bends in the aluminum. until they keep bringing it around and that formerly solid sheet now comes something that you look like that you might have seen on a uh, one hell of a geometry test where you need to find out the area now by doing this they're able to taper the tubing where they need to lighten it up widen it where they need to make welds and just increase and decrease the strength where they need it to give the ride compliance and the feel that they want. Once the flat sheet of metal gets brought all the way around, they run one long seam weld right down it. Let's take a look at that right now. Another interesting fact about the pieces they make for their frames is they don't make just one piece a long length 
and then cut it down between their extra large, large, medium frames, etc. Every single piece is bent to exact specifications for that frame size and that frame size only. There's not one piece that gets reused in between different frame sizes. Keeps the strength exactly where they want it. They have complete control. They do this all in-house. Using their prototyping methods and with the having complete control, they can have a design in theory in the morning and have a usable piece at the end of the day. While the method that they make their frames is fairly specific to them, what isn't specific to them but has become one of the things they are known for is the single pivot classic frame design. Many brands have used this in the past. Uh, Orange has been doing it since day one, since they started making frames. By doing this, they are the masters at knowing exactly how and where to build this frame, where to put the shock, where to put the pivot point to get the ride quality that they want. In this design specifically, they've actually changed how they placed the shock from the previous year to add a little bit of progression to it, a little bit of progressive ending. Now in the realm of mountain bike frames, this is still a more linear shock rate than uh, anything out there. So when you combine the slight progression, mostly linear shock rate with the air shock that's fitted to it and the volume spacers, you get just a nice right amount of ramp up at the very end that gives you some bottom out protection, but also lets you use your complete range of travel and it's very predictable. There's no weird spikes to it. The damping works. You can run it through. If you hit a bump halfway through your travel, you know, a couple consecutive bumps, it feels the same on every bump right up until just before bottom out. That way you can just keep on moving. In past years, uh, they expanded how wide the pivot point was. They added about 11 millimeters overall to the main pivot axle of the single uh, pivot suspension. Uh, for the 2020, what they did now was they offset it. We'll take a close-up look at it. And what this allows you to do now is you have wider range over your choice of front chain rings. Uh, the other design overhung a little bit so you had to use stick to the smaller chain rings now with this one if you know you're going racing somewhere that doesn't have hardly any uphills and you would need a lot more speed for the downs and the flats you can go up you can run 34s probably 36s right now this is fitted with a 30. we've talked about the parts we've talked about the frame but what do we get when we put it together and what becomes of the stage six well, let's make no doubt about it. This is an enduro race machine. Uh, you're probably not going to want this for just some general trail riding. If I was to describe this bike using a partial movie quote, this bike is about speed. Hot, nasty, badass speed. If you know what movie, comment down below. I'll award you two points for a contest that doesn't actually exist. All right, so. Like I said, it'll probably be easier to talk about what this bike doesn't do and then go in order to what it does best. Um, it's not a cross-country bike. You're riding this on local trails. You're on the uh, very tight technical sections. You're going to have a hard time. Combination of 64 degree head angle and this wheelbase in this instance does not help you out and uh, makes it very slow, makes it hard to get around. Um, Climbing, pedaling, it's actually not that bad. And I don't mean not bad as you're going to go out and win a cross-country race because there's hills on it. No. What I mean is, with a combination of the XT drivetrain and this wheelbase, as long as you stay seated, keep your weight centered, keep spinning, it'll go, it'll go up the hill. Not just any hills, it'll actually go up some pretty technical climbs and... Uh, It'll just keep going. It was kind of kind of odd being on a big bike that you got to a hill, you thought it was going to be like shit. Now, as long as you keep pedaling, uh, the suspension starts moving a little bit, as you'll see right here.
But other than that, it's not bobbing out of control. It has a good amount of anti-squat to it. Just stay in the seat, going up a hill, keep your weight going, you'll be fine. All right, I can't see all of it. Let's give it the, uh, the good old fashioned steepness test. It's gone. Yeah. Let's do this. Going downhill and being technical. As you can see, the bottom bracket is far in front of the rear wheel. Just like we were talking about going up hills, do the same thing downhill. Drop the seat post, get in your attack position, and stay in the middle of the bike. Um, you're in front of the rear wheel, where on other bikes, you know, if they're made for general trail riding, that's going to be a lot shorter. You're going to be over the rear wheel more, so you're going to have to get over the front. Not so on this. Keep your weight centered. Keep the bike body separation going. Let it rock back and forth under you. Keep your weight over that bottom bracket, and it's going to go like hell. Uh, very subtle changes needed if you actually have to weight the front more or weight the rear more because of the length. Um, now, I don't want to bullshit you and tell you about how good at enduroing that this bike is. I didn't really get to ride it like that. Um, I had plans to take it to a bike park, take it to the mountains, maybe go visit some of the guys down at the shed and uh, put it on some good mountain trails, you know, get some real good descents out of it. Just didn't work out. Uh, so I did a bunch of regular trail riding. That's where this whole point of view is coming from. But with what I did expose it to, there's nothing I put this bike in that got it in over its head. I could not outride this bike. The faster it went, the more stable it became. Uh, so in the future, maybe we'll get this bike under some actual uh, enduro racers, some people that are really gonna you know, put the thumb screws to it, and uh, we'll see their opinion, see how it stacks up. Using another movie quote, I loved riding it. It's so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend it. Again, another two points if you comment down below where that one came from. We've talked about the parts. We've looked at the numbers. Told you about how it rides as far as I got to take it. So we'll say this is more of a bike check than a full ride review. Um, I hope you like what you saw. We're going to have more coming up. Uh, more orange bikes coming up. I don't want to give that away just yet. So you'll have to be sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel, click the bell. I will also be doing accessory updates on the Facebook and the uh, Instagram pages for Watt on Wheels. Make sure you follow those also. So I thank you for joining me yet again. I'll see you next time. Maybe we'll get the ride together.